This video is made possible by Kaji Vocals. Uh, we've done a lot of live streaming. It hasn't always gone too well for the channel, uh, but with Kaji's help, we're able to do that again. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video if you care to know where we live stream. Anyway, well, let's do those. I love this change in texture. I love this. Super deep, super rich. Compared to that to this. Right? Higher larynx. A little bit, you know, more lighter mix. Let's it go. Right? Little staccato. Boom. And then she contrasts. Beautiful, lush singing. It's like listening to an amazing trumpet player. This is really cool. Okay, Belt. Okay. Okay, I know everyone gets mad when I stop a lot, but this is really hard not to talk about right here, right now. So... Longer lines with belting, uh, generally more difficult. Um, belting is kind of precarious by nature, and um, sustaining uh, one note is not so bad, but uh, because the folds get so thick during a belt, moving them around is much more difficult. And it's flawless. And then she decrescendos by using a totally different technique, what's called a, a thyroid tilt. And I just want to, I want to play it and then we'll get into the minutia. This is super, super hard, impressive, but more importantly, beautiful. Okay. This is why that's, this is why this, is, I promise you that this, this is going to be as, as hip as as a as a Fonzie busting a karaoke machine, okay? This is this is how cool this is. So what we have here, this is the thyroid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. We're gonna focus on this one first. This is this is my arrow. I'm on my A game today. The cricoid cartilage for a belt. This is what's responsible for belting. It tilts upwards and brings all of this closer as a result. This is what makes belting possible. What happens is that the uh, vocal folds right here become shorter and fatter. So this, these are the vocal folds. As the cricoid cartilage comes in, boom, right? That's, think of that as gone and then these are way, 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 way thicker. Now the problem with belting, the risk of belting is that if you put too much air behind this, pressure will build up in such a way that the folds will violently blow open and then slam together on the way down. So it's very, very, very difficult to do well as far as breath is concerned. But because it's freaking patty, she can move around, which is already difficult, right? The thicker, the fatter the folds are, the harder they are to move around. She moves around seamlessly and then does something super, super cool. So not only can you tilt the cricoid cartilage, you can tilt the thyroid cartilage, which stretches this way. 
as it stretches this way, the folds stretch with it. They're attached. And so what this does is it tightens and elongates the fold, right? It allows you to go higher. It adds a lush sound. This is how you do pretty much any classical singing is going to do this. But no. No, 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 we're not done. But wait. There's more. Oh, yep, 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 yep. There we go. That's what I wanted. It's dramatic, so I wanted to get a close up. Anyway, what she's doing right now is she is belting cricoid cartilage is tilted upwards, and then as she goes through that last line, thyroid cartilage tilts this way, cricoid untilts, and then she decrescendos off of that. This woman just won a gold medal in the vocal Olympics. These larynx shenanigans are next level. Also, by the way, she came to my store once when I was working at Trader Joe's. Uh, super nice lady. So, yeah, she's 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 great, like super nice. Anyway. Okay. If there are any Rochelle Farrell fans watching this, you're probably seeing something that's quite familiar. Um, but very few singers take this idea to the extreme that we're seeing. So this is the vocal track. Uh, we're not going to get too complicated. This is a very kind of involved graph. But don't worry about it. All right. All you need to know is that this is the tongue. This is the soft palate, and these are the teeth. For the most part, resonance, as far as we're concerned, we're going to call vowels, right? What we call vowels are created using primarily these. There is more involved, but, like, pretty insignificant. Uh, this is the primary uh, vehicle in which vowels are formed. So what's amazing to me is that in a single, like, in, in a very short period of time, she is changing her tone with vowels and other things. Let's talk about the vowels first. So by pursing your lips, you extend the vocal tract, right? So these, oops, there we go. These are the lips. By extending them, you elongate the vocal tract, which allows lower resonance to become more powerful. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So, extending the vocal tract. Here's the proof in the pudding. This is called a spectrogram. Now, what a spectrogram does is it will tell you how high the frequencies are over time, and it will light up. The, the brighter the spectrogram, the louder that specific frequency is. So you can see the frequencies right there. So let's do a quick experiment. So this is the vowel morph, if you will, for lack of a better term, that we just did. Okay. Obviously, the brighter vowels, we're seeing higher frequencies. But take a look at this. This is what we want to know. These lower frequencies are getting significantly brighter the more I purse my lips. So when we look at Patty, here's what we're seeing. Now, the, the fidelity of this video definitely leaves something to be desired, but, oops, there we go. But you can see she's rounding her lips, and this happens in the beginning of the phrase. 
which is uh, pretty dope arenas, right? So she's doing that right here. Now she's brightening her vowels. But that's not all. I should, I should like make a little quick like, but wait, there's more. I do this way too often. So we have another graph. This right here, right here. Okay. This is, that's the areopiglottic muscle, right? And then we have this. These are the folds, the areopiglottic folds. So what happens is when you want twang, you contract the areopiglottic sphincter, otherwise known as twang or AES. So she's not just changing her vowels. No, 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 no. No, she's not that basic. I mean, that makes actually, that disgruntled look actually makes sense with this haircut, but we're going to go back to what matters here. So she is doing all kinds of shenanigans. Warmth. Someday I wish upon a star. Twang. Brightness. Back and forth between the cricoid tilt, the thyroid tilt, AES, different vowels. This is one phrase. It's one phrase. Okay, key change. Of course, they have to end on the ninth chord because that's jazz. I, I, th I thought it was going to end right here. That is preposterously difficult. So what that is... It's a it's a fry of the false folds. The false folds are ligaments. Let's 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 get up another graph. I won't spend too much time on this. This is these are the uh, the false folds. They're above the vocal folds, and these are ligaments. So they're much 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 more durable. And so what happens is that the false folds can come together and do this like distortion fry. It's how actually metal singers. It's like how you do growling like to me stuff like that right so the problem <laughs> the difficulty in doing this you have to use so 
little air. So high notes already take very little air, right? Because the folds keep getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Regardless of whatever tilt you use, they will get thinner, and they get so thin to a certain point that they will blow open, and you get what people will call falsetto. Or, or at, at best, you'll get like a mix, right? Where there's some closure, but not, a, not all of its closure. It is so hard to add on top of that some false full distortion that gets you that rasp, that gets you that grit. And then on top of that, she's not even done! The courage, the strength, the charisma that you need to be able to do this, like, this has to be so real. You can't just start jumping around, right? It has to be in you to do this. Now, th there's something I really, really, really want to say. This, this, is, this is something that comes up a lot. I don't know much about Patty and, and her, her upbringing, but I'll, uh, this, this happens a lot when I cover gospel or, or R&B or uh, singing uh, styles where the majority of singers uh, went through the process of growing up in, in a black church. And I'll, I'll say this in response to the, the, the comments that I know will follow. Uh, is it, did Patty LaBelle get formal training? Probably not. Is Patti LaBelle thinking about any of this as she is going through this performance? Absolutely not. She's not like, well, if I just, you know, if I just, I'm going to turn this knob and push this, like, no. Does Tiger Woods think about his golf swing? Absolutely not. That's the practice room. Patty has got it on lock. All of these things that I just talked about are complicated enough when you learn to isolate them let alone do all of this, let alone do all of this as though it's nothing. You cannot replace being around excellent singers when you're growing up in a community that celebrates great singing. That's an education in and of itself. And you can't replace that. So I just want to make that a statement. I don't want anyone coming to me and like, can you uh, teach me how to sound like Patty? No, no, I can't do it. No one can do it. Uh, yeah.